Hey everybody, it's Master Galengeist here, bringing you my review for the latest episode of Into the Badlands, Moon Rises, Raven Seeks. And this was another good episode of Into the Badlands, but there was a little bit of confusion when I was kind of watching it, a little bit of what was going on with the Pilgrim's aims. But overall, I thought it was really well done. We got some cool kind of fight scenes going on. And we just got a little bit more plot set up of who the Pilgrim is, kind of what his objectives are, what his followers are. That was a good key component of the episode. While also forward, uh, doing forward momentum with what's going on with Sonny, Baji, and the rest of them, and tying in with the Widow and everything. So this starts off, and we see that the Pilgrim... And I haven't gotten a character name for his woman advisor yet, but they're looking around and she's trying to help him with his destiny. And that they have found this island that has this kind of castle-like structure on it that's supposed to be the first temple of Azra. And it's like, okay. So they kind of set off to go on with what's going on there. And they get in, they see it's kind of a museum of sorts. And tells them to kind of look around and all that. While we hear that there's rumblings from the rest of the group that they are unsatisfied with this. With one dude being kind of the leader of it. Being kind of pissed off that it's just kind of ruins and everything. We also get into that point where we see that Castor and his companion are kind of looking around as well. And that they're talking about how they're following the pilgrim and they want to see Azra and everything and he wants to see that before he dies and pilgrim's kind of concerned about that he goes to talk about this with his advisor lady who we learned is kind of like his mother that he was set forth as a sacrifice to counterfeit gods and that yes the dark ones lead short lives but He's fulfilling his, you've given him purpose and everything. So, I like the kind of nuance that they're doing with the Pilgrim. He kind of uses people, but yet he does see in his own eyes that he's trying to do something good. That doesn't mean that he doesn't feel bad for what's going on. And that he kind of has doubts himself. But, of course, he hears about the grumbling and he has to go do what's going on with the grumbling people. So, of course, he talks about like blind faith and how he is going forth with his faith to get him to Azra and everything while it's his fault that they feel this way with the doubt and everything and that it's the shepherd's duty to rectify this he was telling that to the advisor before he went to do this so he blindfolds himself and he lets them draw their weapons and we see that the pilgrim is definitely a force to be reckoned with he pulled off some sick ass shit in this fight scene just I didn't know if the kill of the week was going to be the dude who he just one punched or the dude that he fucking thunderclapped and then broke the dude's neck I'm like that was pretty cool and what I found very interesting was he did not kill the one that was the most vocal in his grumbling very smart move because that would have made him a martyr so he asked him if he still had guys. He's like, I believe, I believe. And then he embraced him and got him back into the fold. Very good tactics to maintain cult-like observances and everything. So they get ready to do this kind of sacrament. And that happens on later on at the end of the episode. So I'll get into that. Well, at the end, we see this interesting ritual with what's going on with their group. A... At first, I thought they were going to kill the advisor lady, but evidently they've done this before, and it's crazy. She asks him in their own kind of ancient language, because they're, at first said they were trying to build a new Azra, but they're still trying to find Azra. Because when Castor and his companion were looking to review Finder, they saw the city of Azra in it. So it's like, okay, are these people from Azra? Or are they trying to rebuild Azra? It's a little bit murky at the moment. Uh, it's just... At the, what it's set up towards, more towards the end that it's putting on that they're trying to find Azra. That they were looking for the catalyst, i.e. Baji, who had sent the signal. So they evidently believed that it was Azra sending the signal instead of Baji. So we'll have to see, unless 
sending out that signal to gather all the groups, and thus Azure would then send out their force. So we'll see. I'm putting it more stock because that it's been more said throughout the episode that they're trying to find Azure. So in order to do this, there's this full moon, and they're using this sacrament to glean information. So he, like, cuts his lips and kisses his advisor woman to lend his strength to her. And then he, like, stabs her in the back, and they put hooks into her. This was the most gruesome part of the episode. I'm like, oh, God. And they lift her up, and she's like, I can see everything. I'm like, these people are going to be interesting. I'm like, cool. So we got a good amount of information on them, which I did not feel was an information dump. It was a nice thing of just them trying to talk through what's going on with their group while we're getting information on what they're doing. We then also get what's going on with MK. And that's kind of tied in with the Widow and Moon. We see Moon come in. He's all dressed up as his regent self. And uh, the Widow gives him kind of a present. A, a cool kind of hand that has a short blade in it and darts in the knuckle. I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. And then MK comes down pissed off because she's taken the opium away from him. And he's going, oh, you're the... Oh, you've only got one hand. She must be desperate <laughs> as a regent. And then she asks Moon to train him because she wants him to get his gift back. This, of course, then starts off a pretty good fight scene between MK and Moon, showing that even in a kind of whacked out opium state, trying to get opium, MK is still a force to be reckoned with. But Moon, of course, is able to take him out. And... This is after he learns that Sonny was the one that trained him. He's like, well, it's time for you to nap, and punches him out. It it was just a really great choreographed fight scene, and has shown how far MK has come since the first season. This, of course, leads to other problems, as she's pretty much trying to force him to get his power back. And they want to use Baji in that way. And, of course, she tasks Moon with finding Baji since the Iron Rabbit had taken the true, the supplies and Baji. And said that they need Baji alive, even though Moon wants to do other things to him. We don't know exactly the extent, because we know he wants to kill Sonny, but we don't know exactly what vengeance form he wants to take on Baji. But she wants the Iron Rabbit dead. Tilda. So, of course, he goes off. Of course, the the end point that we get to with MK is that he does get one of the Widow's troops to, well, one of the Widow's uh, people that are uh, responsible for his captivity to get him opium. And she's like, just don't, just don't uh, let the Widow find out about it. And of course, he's trying to do some uh, <laughs> player moves. And she's like, all right, fine. And... He pretty much injects himself with it, and he then gets into a kind of state similar to the kind of drugs that were used by the Master. And the dark portion of himself... This was interesting. I liked how this was done. Saying that the Master tricked you and deceived you. We did not kill our mother. And you're just trying to kill yourself with the opium. And it's like, yeah, he doesn't like where he's at, and he's trying to kill himself. And we see that kind of thing going on with the repercussions. But then, of course, we see MK going through the motions again in his dream, and we see that it's Quinn's Clippers that are taking out the village, and that Sonny is the one that killed MK's mother. And this, of course, has him then go back into his gift state. It's like, oh, so MK's evidently gotten his gift back, but not in the not in his physical body yet, because he's tweaking out. Of course, seeing the widow and <laughs> the woman that gave him the drugs freaking out and of course the widow sends her to go get a healer to help MK so we'll have to see kind of what happens with that so that's where that ends I don't know how I feel about it being like Sonny is the one that killed MK's mother I thought they were going to link it to the pilgrim or whatnot, or a person in the pilgrim's retinue so we'll have to see how this goes I like it that it's an interesting kind of parallel because MK has looked at Sonny as a father and how he's going to deal with this information going forward. So that's where we leave them off at.
Sunny and Baji and Lydia are then another kind of group that we deal with towards the end of the episode. Sonny, of course, is going, okay, he's got this gift. We need to do something about it. And Lydia gives information that her father used to go and provide offerings to this mad witch woman. Um, Ankara, I believe. It was in, yeah, Ankara. And that she was a master in the monastery that was thrown out. Actually, Baji's master, as he's laying information on that, he's like, listen, she's a liar, she's crazy, don't go there. But, of course, Lydia gives more information saying that she's at Vulture's Peak, Baji knows how to get there, problem is, it's through the front lines of the war. But, of course, Sonny doesn't really have that many options. If he takes him to the master, Sonny will probably be killed and he'll take the baby and that'll be the end of that. This is the only option that Sonny has. And Baji, of course, is just... He doesn't want to do it. And doing all the stuff he's done in regards to his mission to, for like Azure and everything has really shaken him and shaken his belief in these kinds of things. And he doesn't really want to do it. <laughs> then, of course, Tilda comes in saying like she wants to help out and she didn't know what was going on. And Sonny is just saying that some debts can't be paid, even though she had helped keep Moon off of Sonny's trail when Moon came to visit and wanted to know about the convoys and everything. That was an interesting scene because it paired up Moon and Lydia and their history together as well, since Moon was with Quinn as his bear, uh, as when he was a clipper and Quinn was his bear. And Lydia says that she's going to go to the widow to talk about what's going on. So Tilda's pretty much going, listen, I'll help you through what's going on to the front lines to kind of make up what's going on, what I did in the past. I'm like, hey, Tilda's doing pretty good. I kind of like this character development for her. So that's kind of where Sonny's plans and his storyline kind of end up. We then get Lydia talking to the Widow, and the Widow, she's crafty. She said, she gives Lydia the ultimatum going, listen, give me the Iron Rabbit, mm all those associated with that, and I'll make you a viceroy, and you can take over the fort, and that's where your refugees can be. Because Lydia was hammering on it that you don't accept refugees in the sanctuary anymore, because, well, it's not that she doesn't accept them, but the refugees aren't coming because they pretty much get churned out as cannon fodder for the next flashpoint on the front line. So, the widow knows what she needs to do, and I think Lydia will probably accept this offer, because she's thinking about her people first. So, there's a lot of kind of cool stuff that happened in this episode. And, I really am intrigued to see how the Pilgrim's going to change up this war effort. Who he'll be able to get onto his side. What he's going to do with, like, Baji. And, if he'll factor into what's going on with, well, he probably will with, like, Sonny and Henry and all that. And what's going to happen there? Because a child being able to enter this state is probably, well, not just a child, a baby entering the state that the Dark Ones have. Their body can't really handle it. They don't know even. They're still trying to figure out motor functions. It'll be kind of, well, kind of have to see how that goes on. And I'm glad that Baji brought up that gift can only be passed through the blood. And I don't think that Vale is the one that passed it. So, hopefully we get more information on Sonny and what was go what's going on. And maybe he had been the same way as a child and they had to lock him down for him to survive to even live to use the power. So, I hope that kind of brings into some interesting points. I'm also looking forward to seeing how the Widow kind of tailors her war effort and how she goes moving forward because she's also always an interesting character. She's not as crazy as Quinn in doing her kind of death-defying escapes from death, but I like her as a villain and I'm interested to see what her eventual end game is going to be for her as a character. So those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, 
if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.